Hey guys, welcome to another video. This video I'm going to be stemming into the do's and don'ts of flexible dieting. I'm going to start with the list of do's and I'm just going to jump right into it. The first do is do prepare and do create healthy habits. So what I mean by that is do have meal preps, do make the food prior because with flexible dieting people kind of just assume that you can go out and just eat whatever you want and count it in my fitness pal and if you do that you're more likely to go over or under your macros if you create a healthy habit of preparing real food for yourself and preparing meals then you will stick to your diet more easily and you will feel genuinely better about the program that you're on Flexible dieting still is dieting. So if you are not preparing food for yourself, if you're not taking the time to create meals for yourself and creating your meals for the next day, then it's like that saying, if you fail to prepare, then prepare to fail. Do exercise cravings to prevent binge eating. We always want to stay where we are comfortable. So we find ourselves eating the same foods over and over and over. Even with flexible dieting, it can be so easy to find yourself getting into that routine of just eating the same things and you may find yourself feeling like, hey, I really want a Snickers bar. But if you tell yourself that you can't have it, you're gonna want it even more and that could potentially cause a binge. So I'm not saying eat a Snickers bar every single day, but I am saying if you feel you are really, really, really craving chocolate or something sweet, add it into your macros, incorporate it into your diet for that day. You can exercise your cravings with flexible dieting and that is one of the amazing things about it and hopefully that will prevent binge eating. My third point is do pay close attention to your digestion. When you're doing flexible dieting, you're feeding your body all these different things, you're getting all these different minerals and all these different vitamins, however, if you are not taking proper care of your digestion, your body is not going to properly absorb all of the nutrients you're putting into it. Gas and bloating is not good in terms of digestion. It is like the major red flag for when your body is not able to digest something properly. That is something that you need to pay attention to. When you're not digesting something properly, it means your body can't absorb the nutrients. And when you are dieting of any sort and when you're just living life, you need to have the best digestion so that your body's getting all the nutrients and the minerals that it needs. Do listen to physical cues. This is a really, really, really big one. Something that's often overlooked, especially in competitors, because as you go along with prep, you're going to feel tired. You're going to feel lethargic, obviously, because you're getting lower in body fat and it has those effects on you. But if it is taken to a new level where you literally feel like something is wrong, you need to pay attention to those physical cues. For example, the other night, I have been pushing myself really, really hard with cardio, really, really hard with training because my calories are higher and I feel like I can do more. However, my body is still 21 weeks into prep. I am physically exhausted despite having all this mental energy and I wasn't paying attention to my body that day and when I, when I finished my macros that night, I noticed my blood sugar dropped so low because I've been pushing myself and pushing myself. And it wasn't just feeling tired or like slightly nauseous. It was like, I feel dizzy, I feel like I'm gonna pass out, and I feel like I'm gonna throw up. And I listened to those physical cues and I was like, I know what I need to do. I need to go over my macros right now and I need to have a piece of fruit and some jam. Just get that sugar in me, get something in me. I don't even care if I'm going to go over my macros right now. This is what my body needs. I managed to fix it by having that fruit, having that sugar. As soon as I put that stuff in my body, the nausea went away, the dizziness went away, and I felt fine. I took care of the problem because I listened to what my body was telling me. If you're noticing that you're feeling an excessive tiredness, do pay attention to that. Look at what you're eating. You want to be eating foods higher in iron if you feel more tired, like shellfish, quinoa, dried fruit, seeds and nuts, things like that. So what you eat has a direct effect on your body. Do choose real foods over artificial foods. What I mean by artificial foods is protein shakes, protein bars, those like little snack bars, stuff like that, 
please choose real food over that. The thing with protein bars and protein shakes is they are very convenient and they require little to no effort to make, but they can mess up your digestion. They're not that high in nutrients and I don't want to call it fake food, but it's just, it's not real food. You can have a protein shake or you can have protein in any other form. You can have prawns, you can have fish, chicken, tofu, you can have anything else. And you will get so much more nutrients, so many more vitamins from eating that other source than having a protein shake. Don't get me wrong, protein shakes are great. They're super convenient. If you're out and about and you need to get something in, they're great. But I wouldn't choose a protein shake over chicken or real food. I will always choose the real food over the artificial food. Do be confident when having a cheat meal. As a competitor, feeling full is something that is foreign to me. Because I am dieting and because I have been dieting for so long, my stomach is used to eating these small portions. I'm not used to being full. I eat my food and I'm immediately hungry. When I get a cheat meal, I go all out, I have fun, I put away the scale, I put away the macros. You need that mental break. You need to be able to be confident in allowing yourself to be fulfilled and to be full and to enjoy food that is not tracked. Obviously with flexible dieting, you can express your cravings, you can have whatever food you want, but a cheat meal is a cheat meal. It is not supposed to be tracked. You're not supposed to feel guilty. You're not supposed to feel bad about yourself for having this off plan meal because most of the time it's actually beneficial for you. Cheat meals not only are good for your brain, but they're actually good for your metabolism. When I get a cheat meal, I do not worry about how much I'm eating because personally I can eat a lot of food. I know that as a fact, I am a girl with a very big appetite. I can put a lot of food away. When I get a cheat meal, I am excited, I am happy, I don't feel guilty because I know that my body deserves it and I know that I deserve it. All right, now we are going to move into the list of don'ts. Don't create this obsessive nature of macro counting. Obviously you have to count your macros, but don't let it get to the point where you are stressing yourself out, you're stressing everyone out because, oh my God, I need to count my macros. There's two grams of carbs in that. Oh my God, I'm gonna have a meltdown because that is the worst and I've been there. This goes back to one of the points on the do list. You do have to prepare your food. You do have to prepare yourself to be ready, ready to hit your macros, ready to get those goals done. If you don't prepare, you're going to end up in that crazy obsessive state where you're counting everything throughout the day and you're stressing yourself out. The point of flexible dieting is not to be the obsessive dieter. That is literally the point of flexible dieting. Flexible dieting is supposed to be flexible. It is supposed to be easier on you mentally. You don't want to become the obsessive flexible dieter because then you're just going to stress yourself out. Point number two kind of relates to point number one, but point number two is don't overthink. Flexible dieting is great because you get to eat everything under the rainbow. You get to eat all of the foods, but if you're trying so, so, so hard to create this fantastic diversity day in and day out, and it's getting to the point where you're having to overthink it, you're not reaching your macros, you're going over your macros, you're just gonna overcomplicate things and you're gonna set yourself up for failure. Overthinking is probably the worst thing in the world. It creates anxiety, it creates false fear, it creates all of these problems and it can actually make you physically sick. So if you're overthinking your diet, if you're overcomplicating it, if you're overstressing about your macros, just take a breather. Everything is fine. Hit your macros at the end of the day and you will be all good. There's no need to stress about it, there's no need to cry about it, and there's no need to overthink it. Point number three is don't be afraid of sodium. Now when I say sodium, you're probably thinking, oh my God, sodium is bad. You're not supposed to have sodium. 
That is wrong. Sodium is a mineral that is essential to life. Sodium sends nerve impulses and affects muscle function and contraction. So when people cut sodium completely out of their diet, their performance is gonna drop and they're gonna feel like crap. I add sodium to every single meal. I am also drinking enough water to counteract the sodium so that I don't have a mineral imbalance. I actually got a mineral imbalance when I was prepping because when my water was very, very high, I would drink a lot of it at one time. I would chug copious amounts of water at one time because I just wanted to get it, get it in and get it through. So I ended up chugging about two liters in 10 minutes and I immediately felt dizzy and I could not stand up without having the room spinning. And I was like, oh my God, there's a mineral imbalance going on because obviously I just drank all of this water and you kind of just know, it's back to that point of listening to the physical cues, you kind of just pick up on it and you know that something's wrong. But yeah, sodium is important and water is also important. My last point is don't be afraid to expand your palate. Don't be afraid to try something new. Don't be afraid to really get out of your comfort zone. Flexible dieting is supposed to be fun. You're allowed to try new things. You're allowed to expand on that creativity and you're allowed to have that diversity in your diet. If you find yourself after a while getting used to like, you find yourself eating the same few things every day, don't be afraid to like try something new one day. I started adding jam into my oatmeal because I would have peanut butter and I found I was having oats and peanut butter every single day and it was getting routine. So now I switched it up and now I have jam and I have like salmon locks and egg whites and just all of this new food and it's been amazing. Like I, I write it down and I put a little star beside it in my book and I write this is really good, I should have this again. So anyways, that is my list of do's and don'ts for flexible dieting. I hope you found this helpful. Please subscribe, please leave a like and leave a comment. Let me know if you guys want me to cover another topic or another area of flexible dieting or the fitness lifestyle. And I will see you all in the next video.